We have suggested that certain functions might be expressible as power series. We'll now start to investigate to that. If a function is going to have any chance of being expressible as a power series, it has to be infinitely differentiable. And what we mean by that is that the first derivative has to exist, the second derivative has to exist, all of the higher order derivatives have to exist. Suppose we have such a function and it's equal to a power series. This is a supposition. On the face of it, there is no earthly reason that a function should be expressible as an infinite sum like this. But suppose it is. Let's ask the question, what are these coefficients a sub i. And the first of these we're going to find easily. If we stick a into this series, all of these become zero. And the only term that remains is a sub zero. Now let's go left to right. To find a sub one, we're going to take the derivative f prime. And when you're working with a power series, you simply take the derivatives term by term, as if you had a finite polynomial. And now we'll repeat the trick we used here. If we stick A into this, these terms all turn to zero. The only thing that survives is this A sub one. So a sub one equals the derivative. Let me write that a sub one is the derivative divided by one. We certainly can write that if we want to, and it will make the pattern clearer. And now we're going to keep repeating these steps. Take a derivative, thug a in. So the second derivative, once again, we plug a in, and almost all of our terms turn to zero. The only terms that survive are this a sub two times two times one. So a sub two is the second derivative divided by two times one. Take the third derivative, plug A in, everything turns to zero except for this. So once more, we are enabled to solve for this coefficient and 
you can perhaps see the pattern that's emerging. A sub two, the second derivative, and two times one is two factorial. A sub three, the third derivative, and three times two times one is three factorial. In general, a sub n is the nth derivative evaluated at the center of the power series divided by n factorial. This is even true for a sub zero. It has always struck me as a strange that we should define zero factorial to be one, but it's the definition we need if this and many other formed of those involving the factorial are going to hold. So what have we done? We have supposed that the function equals some power series. That supposition might be false. There's no inherent reason that a function ought to equal a power series. But if the function does equal the power series, we have found the coefficients of that power series. And we give the power series that we've created in this way a name. We call it the Taylor series. And I know I'm repeating myself, but it's worth sort of bearing in mind always that there is no guarantee that a function equals its Taylor series. And we'll see an example of a function that doesn't down the line. Having said that, a lot of very important functions do equal their Taylor series at zero. The sine does, the cosine does, the exponential function does. Most day-to-day -day functions can be written as a Taylor series. Properly speaking, we have a second definition. We shouldn't talk about a function's Taylor series because it has a different Taylor series depending on where this A is. If A equals zero, The Taylor series gets a name. It's called the McFarren 
series. Having said that, in day-to-day -day mathematical life, it's very common not to use this phrase. And if you hear someone talk about a function's Taylor series, to just assume that they mean the Taylor series at to zero. One more definition, the partial sums of this infinite series get their own name. All I really have to say about this is to take note of the word order. This is not necessarily an nth degree polynomial. Its degree is less than or equal to its order. 